Hello, ladies and germs, bots and goyles. I am uh, pleased to be reading poetry for you in honor of the Community Poetry Open Mic. This is bonus early reading. It's from 1 to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, but I'm remiss for not reading enough last month, so I am catching up now. I'm reading for you poems from the CCD January to April 2022 issue collection book that is titled Unfinished Business. Um, last year in Confluence, Pennsylvania, I think where this photo was taken. But I'd like to share with you a few poems from one section of this book. And this first one I'd like to share with you is titled Dreams 2, 3, 19. I was at a local brewery, there alone, waiting for him to pick me up. But suddenly, all alone, I looked down and saw I had no pants on. I mean, I had a large t-shirt on, but no pants, not even underwear or shoes. So I tried to pull my shirt down. I, I didn't know what else to do. And realized that there were other people at this brewery, and no one seemed to notice. No one was even looking at me. So I tried to act normal, though I kept pulling my shirt down my legs. At one point, I looked over, and a man said, Hey, don't feel bad. I don't have any pants on either. And when I looked at him, I saw he had his shoes on and he was wearing Speedos for underwear. So I thought, this is just a flamboyant man trying to get attention. He might look indecent, but he's not exposed illegally. And it was just then that I spotted him. Oh, thank God you're here. I, I tried to pull my shirt down to cover myself up, and I said, oh, oh, we've got to get out of here, like now. So we left the brewery. But suddenly, right outside the brewery, there was an outdoor impromptu flea market. I, I mean, seriously, there were booths of assorted nobodies selling random crap. And it didn't even occur to me to look for <laughs> at any of those tables for something, anything for me to cover up with. I just wanted to get out of this mess of people who shouldn't even be here in the first place. None of this should even be going on, and I don't even know where my pants and underwear are. And when I turned to find my rod, to find my man, and he was nowhere to be found, he, he was right here. Where did he go? So then my next priority was to find him, because at this point he was my only way to get away from all of these strangers while I didn't have anything to cover up the bottom half of me with. Now, at this point, I'm alone, and all I could think was that if he were here, he'd probably say that at least I have nice legs to look at, and all I can do is pull down my shirt. That was a dreams poem in honor of David Rubin, who was writing them, who is the man that took, uh, that started the open mic that I took over in Chicago for a number of years. And, and because he did those things, I thought I would start doing them as well at times. So there was a dreams poem for you. Um, I should also say hello to all Facebook people that are watching live. I should, you know, do what Facebook tells me and say, wave, hello, nice to see you. Thank you for, uh, tuning in, but uh, these are a few poems from the CCND January to April 2022 issue collection book that is titled Unfinished Business. Uh, I was going to read a couple more poems and I'm going to do a bunch of sets of them and I say this for my, for my Facebook peeps for an open mic that goes on from 1 to 3 p.m. on the first Wednesdays of every month called Community Poetry at a bookstore and it's not going on so in honor of that I'm here with a bunch of books behind me. I got my bar globe even behind me. Check that out. <laughs> awesome sauce. Um, but I thought I'd share with you a few poems. Um, this first one is that I'm sharing with you is titled Ending It With Alexa. <sighs> when I first met her, I fell in love. She was the answer to my prayers. Or so I thought. Every time I'd ask her a question, her answer was only, I don't know. <laughs> and I thought, I thought there was more to her than this, but by now all she asks of me are blank stares at every question I ask, empty responses to everything. So I looked into her and found out that at every waking moment, she was keeping tabs on every single thing I ever did or said. And I thought, 
Wait a minute. Why on earth is she so monitoring me? I never agreed to this, and I really can't stand this covert spying of hers. So, this is when I had to end it. I understand being connected to someone, but this is too much. I just need to have my privacy again. I never, I, you know, I like connectivity, but I never understand why people would have an Alexa or something that would watch them all the time. I never get it. I really don't. And I will share with you a few more poems, but in the meantime, I have a computer screen here because this was actually released as an image, if I can find the page for it, um, because when I've got a short poem, it would also be able to be released as, haha, I've got it for you guys here, as an Instagram image and things like that, so I'd have ending it with Alexa, ending it with Alexa. It's really hard to be able to see, I'm sure, but if you go to scars.tv and look for the poem ending it with Alexa in the book online for Unfinished Business, you can find a link to that image as well. And then, I thought it would be humorous to share with you for the next poem, haha, since this CCD is an unreligious book, I've got a couple of poems that are actually based on the Bible. So I'm going to share one of them with you, get a load of this. Um, these might be going into a 2023 book from Cyberwhip Press, we will see, called Testament. But this poem is titled Genesis 22. Living in this desert land is never easy, but the Middle East is all I've ever known. Uh, and I want to do everything I can for me and my wife and my only son. But the only dictator who has ruled over us all, uh, all my life and longer, is so tyrannical, so, so torturous even, when I have never done anything wrong. I, I know of how once, many years ago, he let the entire land flood, destroying almost everything. And more recently, he even destroyed an entire city not far from here. I heard of this from a few who had survived his wrath. This is why I try to do everything I can to stay in our dictator's favor. And when his errand seems so absurd, and, and you still have no chance to comply to it, Recently, a few of his goose-stepping stormtrooper henchmen approached me as I was afraid of what they were going to say to me or what they would do to me. But they came to me like angels at first, saying there was only one thing the dictator asked me to do, and if I did this, then me and my wife would remain in the dictator's favor. These are the words from the dictator himself, <laughs> these angels said to me. So I eagerly asked what my dictator wanted me to do. Now, I always thought this dictator was ludicrous, but when these henchmen told me that to win his favor, I had to kill my only son, I thought this had to be a joke. But the angel's expressions never changed. So I understood that in order for us to live, my son, at my own hand, must die. Now, you may hear this story and think of the cruelty of this murderous act, but, but no one thinks of the suffering that I had to go through to, to, to make this decision that me and my wife may have salvation from the wrath of this eternal dictator as long as I committed this one truly inhumane act. This one thing a father would never, ever want to do. This tortured me. This, this tormented me. But I knew that this was the only thing I could ever do. Uh, the dictator even showed me a place that was far away so no one would know of the barbarous act I committed to my only son. So, a few days later, I asked my son to come with me while I made an offering so we could be at peace. And my son was happy to come with me. Oh, how I love him so. I, I still cannot believe I am actually going to do this. Is all I could think as I was preparing myself to kill my only son. 
my, my flesh, my blood. And when we get to that farther mountain and saw a clearing for the offering, my son even asked what we were offering, uh, what he was going to be offering, and, and although it broke my heart, I took a rope and I bound my only son and when he was restrained, I, I grabbed a large knife I brought along. And when I, and when I lifted that knife up high, that is when I heard the henchmen come to me in the clearing to say, Stop. <laughs> they said unto me, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. <laughs> they knew. I would do this one heinous act. And they said that our dictator was pleased. <laughs> I feared him so much, so deeply, that I was willing to kill my only son. Yes, this is the story of how the people who are good to our leader, how we can still be tormented this way. Am I now in his favor because little old me was willing to be as heinous as he? That I would destroy life derived from me. This is what I battle in my mind now, every day. It makes me wonder what I'm truly willing to do to be with any attempt to try to be free. Okay, CCD Magazine is unreligious, but I've got a couple of Genesis poems going, sprinkling in throughout these uh, upcoming issues. So brace yourself for that, sorry about that. But I will give you a palate cleanser and have one more poem in this reading from this book, Unfinished Business, the January to April 2022 issue collection book from CCND Magazine. Yay! And I just realized that my blue lipstick and blue eyeliner and blue shirt kind of match the blue chair behind me. Never mind. Sorry. I just noticed. No, I'm just being silly. Sorry, goof. I am going to end and read to you a Twitter length, Twitter verse, periodic table poem from a recent book release from Scars Publications, but it's also in this book and it is called Niobium 92 and Solar System Secrets. Niobium-92 is half-lifed, meant extinction, just after our solar system started. Protoplanet Vesta's meteorites at our solar system's birth show so much 92NB. Supernovas make Niobium-92, so our inner planet started after Type 1A supernovas, <laughs> scooping up explosions of two dancing stars. <laughs> this is in the book because if these uh, periodic table of Twitter length are tiny, tiny, tiny poems, if they are short enough, I would often have an image that would go with them. I could show it to you in the book, but it's in black and white, and I have an image of it on the screen here, which is in color, which I'm looking and nobody can see it accurately on this anyway. So if you wanted to see what these little fireworks look like and color and craziness on this thing, you can always go to scars.tv and look for Niobium 92 or look for that in the book, Unfinished Business from CCD, the January to April 2022 issue collection book. This is probably today my final reading from this book in honor of the open mic that is not going on right now and that had stopped because of the pandemic. Um, sorry that I can't be here, sir. So in honor of that, I'm doing these readings. I'm going to come back with more readings from the 1 to 3 p.m. Standard Time, uh, Central Standard Time, uh, time allotment. I hope you enjoy these readings, and I will be back, I promise. And uh, thank you guys for listening. I hope everyone's remaining creative, and I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you very, very soon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you so much.